And welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So tonight we have the final episode of the Steam Library playthrough. Uh, we're going to wrap it up by talking some numbers and talking about what worked, what didn't work, and so on and so forth. So this little adventure began back in February of this year. So we're eight or nine months into it now, 34 episodes later, and 252 games tested, or most of them tested, I should say. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Um, I have shown, hopefully demonstrated uh, quite well, that Linux is a viable option for gaming. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into the numbers real quick. So I'll pull up a, uh, I'm not getting fancy with this. This is going to be a fairly short video anyway. So we have 252 games in the library, uh, a total of 12 games that did not work or, and or we did not test. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. And so we have a total of um, 240 games that worked fine. That puts us at 95% uh, successful the games that we did try. The total number of games that required tweaking was six. Um, two of the games that didn't work were Call of Duty and Destiny because of the anti-cheat, obviously. And then uh, the games that were just borked that just did not work at all were Dark Fall, uh, Splinter Cell, Blacklist, The Division, the original Tomb Raider, and or the original Tomb Raider here, and then uh, Tomb Raider Underworld. Now, Dark Fall, we did get it to work. Um, it runs through, a, you can run through a virtual machine uh, with Windows install, Windows 10 or 11. But I don't count that as running in Linux. So even though the game technically worked on my machine, it didn't really work in Linux. And with that said, I just kind of discounted it, took took the L on it, and then moved on. So looking at the types of games we covered, again, 252 games, everything from flying simulators, horror games, first-person shooters, uh, strategy games. We have platformers, JRPGs, RPGs, open world. Um, just a variety of different games, uh, pretty much representatives from practically every genre out there. I think there's even a virtual novel or two in here somewhere. All right, so let's take a look at the actual numbers. Let me pull over my notes. So of the six games that required some type of tweaking or configuration, uh, the first one we ran into was Apex Legends uh, that required uh, the installation of Proton Easy Anti-Cheat. Now, keep in mind that the developers for this game have pulled all support from Linux, so it's no longer going to work on it, supposedly due to the amount of cheating, which I think is nonsense. Dead Space 3, uh, we ran into an issue where you have to install some EA nonsense. Uh, Devil May Cry 4, uh, there's an issue with full screen, setting it to full screen, and I cover that in Episode 6, so if you want to go to Episode 6 and watch that um, how-to guide, I walk you through how to make that correction by changing the config I and I so you can get into it. Basically, the game can't start in full screen, so you have to change the I and I to start in windowed. And then when you get into the game, you can change it to full screen, play the game, and then change out of full screen back to windowed before you exit the game and you're fine. It's kind of annoying, but that is the fix. Final Fantasy XIV uh, requires a sub. I don't have one. Um, I like Final Fantasy. I'm just not enough of a fan to pay for a subscription and you also have to install the launcher for it and we covered that in episode nine i walk you through that uh the legend of heroes trials of cold steel 3 uh, doesn't shut down properly and i have to kill all steam in order to get out of the game uh, that's kind of a bug it's not really a fix necessarily but or a tweak uh, but it is something to be aware of and mass effect 2 uh, 2010 there is a sound issue and i walk you through how to fix that um, at episode 16 at the 1 minute 42 second mark I begin those instructions so if you want to follow those along it's pretty simple it's only a one time deal once you make the change it's a DLL file that you have to rename uh, once you do that you don't have to mess with it ever again and of course we just talked about the two games that didn't work because of anti-cheats were Call of Duty and Destiny 2 the games that were completely borked again I'm um, going back to the uh, little graphic here that I made for no reason uh, we have Darkfall, uh, Blacklist, The Division, uh, Tomb Raider 1, which is an old DOS game. And then we have uh, Tomb Raider Underworld. Now, we did run into an issue. If you remember the episode, I, I didn't note which episode it was. But um, South Park, uh, The Fractured the Hole, it, the game does work. And actually, I've actually played it on Linux on Pop! OS. The problem is, is that for some reason, my purchase could not be verified by Ubisoft. Uh, but anyway... Um, so we could not test it, but I know it works. Um, I don't want to do a uh, trust me, trust me, bro thing here, but I did play this on Pop OS, and the game does work. And then we did we did have some dupes. So by dupes, these are things that we did not test because there were two instances of the same game, um, and or in the case of Tom Clancy's The Division, uh, the public test server, there was no reason to test that. 
as I mentioned in a previous video, the game is old as dirt. There's no reason to really, you know, bother with it. Um, Metroid Exodus. Well, I can learn how to spell. Uh, Metroid Exodus Enhanced Edition. Um, if we look down at Metroid, is that over here? So we have Metroid Exodus in, in the Enhanced Edition. I think we just tried um, Metroid Exodus. They're the same game, so there's no reason to waste time going through both of them. And same with Mass Effect uh, 2010. And we have 2010 Edition, so we just played through the 2010 and didn't bother with the Edition. Uh, Quake 3 Arena, uh, or Quake 3 Team Arena, um, there's no live servers for that, so it's really hard to even try uh, try to play that. And then, of course, the Raven Remastered. It's the same exact game as the Raven Legacy of a Master Thief. Uh, same as that game, so no reason to go through it twice. Now, I say that, and I did make a mistake in the last couple of episodes. Um, I lost track of the games I had played uh, that I had recently bought through Steam, through a summer sale and so on. So we did play through Dirt Rally 2 twice, Armor Core was played through twice, and Little Kitty Big City was played through twice. So keep that in mind. But after crunching the numbers and going back through each individual video and noting what games were tested, um, I came back and did the math and found that the numbers were actually, uh, these were, this was wrong. So the counter up here in the last video is actually incorrect. That should be 240, and that should be 252. So I don't know how I lost track, but somewhere along the way I did and got out of sync. But I did confirm everything by going back through all the different videos and taking note of what games were tested and what games were played and what games didn't work and so on and so forth. So um, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, again, I really appreciate everyone watching this, especially those of you who watched the entire series. And uh, you just note that when someone tells you you can't game in Linux, they're full of shit uh, because you absolutely can. Granted, you can't play every single game out there. Uh, but, you know, if it's a game like Call of Duty, which I do play Call of Duty, I'll just play it on Xbox. Again, I'm not willing to sacrifice the independence and the freedom that Linux offers me for the sake of a single video game. It's not worth it to me. Maybe some people out there it is, and that's fine. You know, you do you. But um, I'm going to keep Linux and keep plugging away, playing different games that I can. And for the games that I just can't play on it, I'll play it on console. All right, so uh, with that said, um, I thank you all for watching and I hope you got some value out of this. I, and again, I hope that this entire series has helped to show you that gaming on Linux is absolutely 100% viable. All right, thank you all again for watching and stay safe out there and have a good one.